Welcome back ADF fans, so glad you could join me today. Today we're going to dive a little bit into the script behind for data flows and data factory. So I have on my screen a data flow, which is my summary stats data flow that takes the essentially what is the data profiling summary stats and it allows you to persist that to a file. I have some really cool aggregations in here, like I have my summary stats aggregation, which has some fairly complex aggregations in it, or at least it has a lot of work that I put into it. And it includes some um, uh, some patterns, which means that because this is patternized, this is very easily applied to other sources. So what I want to do is I want to be able to take this aggregate right here, and I want to be able to use that in other data flows. So what I can do is click the script button. The script button will give you the script behind for your data flow. This is actually the definition of your data flow. The graph is the user interface and allows you to manage and build and create your data flows that way. But you can also work with the script behind as well. The script is editable and it is searchable. So when you're in this view, this is a text editor. And so what's nice is you can do things like this. Um, you can do a control F, you can do a find, you can do a find and replace. So let's say for example, before I take that aggregate, let's say I wanted to rename it. Right now it's called summary stats. You can tell that right here because this is the aggregate function for the aggregate transformation. The incoming stream is movies, which is the name of the source. And I've named my aggregate summary stats. And I can see that from the UI, right? It's called summary stats. Now, if I wanted to change the name of that, I could do a control F and I could look for summary stats. And I can say, if I see summary stats, I want to change that to summary stats one. So you can do a find and replace. So I'm going to change summary stats to summary stats one. And then I'll simply do a, a replace all. That also changed my file name down here. I didn't really necessarily want to do that, but that'll be just fine. So you click OK, and you'll see that what that did was that did a replace of summary stats for me. And so the script can be used to generate data flows, and it can it's very useful to understand it at least a little bit, so you can do these kinds of interesting things to your uh, to your data flows. So let's go back into here, and let's actually take that now. And this time, I'm going to I want to take that aggregate. So I'm going to take the aggregate all the way up into we have the name and the naming is the tilde greater than and then has the name of the transformation. I'll take the entire set of code. And what I'll do is I'll go over to another data flow and I have a data flow that has a source of a movies a, a CSV file. Now the source does not matter in this case because I'm using patterns. So what I can very easily do now is just add that aggregate through the script behind. So I'll go right after my source one and I'll just paste what we had there. Now remember the beginning part of the of each transformation is the incoming source or the incoming stream. So the stream is source one because I named it source one right there. And they have to give this a name. So let's give this a name. Uh, we will call this, uh, well, why don't we just call it summary stats? Yeah, that works just fine. So now I'm going to have on my design surface, I'm going to have an aggregate it's called summary stats, just like I had in the other one. So that's how you can copy and paste and reuse your code. And this works very well because I don't need to go and do any special mapping to any of the columns because I'm using patterns. So it works very well for other kinds of sources. Now back on my summary stats and within this data flow, let's say I want to do something where I wanted to take, so I could take something from here like this, uh, this select. The select is mapping a bunch of fields for me. And, and imagine you had, you know, 75, 80 different fields you've mapped here and you don't want to have to redo that, but you want to reuse it somewhere else within the same data flow. That's also very uh, straightforward and simple. So in here I can take my script and I can find my select in here. So you do control F, look for select transformation, and there it is. The incoming is uh, movies. The incoming stream, oops, I didn't mean to collapse that. And so what I'll do is I'll just take the whole select and I'll go up to the name of it so I can name it something else. So let's do a select right after. Let's say we want to do another select um, right here against the same uh, stream. That's fine. I can just do a control V. So I'm going to essentially copy it. And now my incoming is going to be the transmission right before it, which is my more args. And there it is. And just format that nicely. And then we'll give this a name. So I'm going to say at the end of it, tilde greater than, and this time we'll call this sele um, select copy. Okay, there we go. So we'll click OK on this. And actually what I want to do, one more thing is now the uh, incoming from the next transformation is no longer going to be more args because I've created this select copy in between. So I'll just say the incoming is select copy. There we go. So now, we have added another select on there. Okay, so you don't necessarily need to know all the details of the script behind, but it's important or interesting to know to make things a little bit easier as you get more complex with your data flows. Now, Data Factory has the history of being very JSON based, and there's still the JSON available to you as well within Data Factory, and that's on the code button. 
are next to these script buttons. So the script behind is for the data flow, the metadata that defines your transformation. The, the code for the JSON is what defines your factory entities. Every entity in data factory is defined as JSON. And so what we do here is this is actually defining your data flow and the actual script that we were modifying before gets shrunk down into a single string property within the JSON. So the new lines and all the nice formatting and uh, tabs are just changed to slash and slash T. And this is how you could also use this. You could take this and you could also use it in the API to generate data flows to the API. So let me just finish off with my intro to the script by also just going back into the script itself and showing you a few more quick things about it. So you can see that you always start with the source for data flow. So you're always going to start with the source. There is no incoming streams. So there's nothing before that. Uh, the name of the transformation is a uh, script function. The function names do not always exactly match the transformation names. So you'll want to take note of that. We do have the documentation for this. And that is right here. I will put the link in the uh, description for the video and in the documentation for the script i have started building putting together some snippets so you can take this code from these script snippets in the documentation you can add these into your uh, into your data flows so here is a, a drive uh, transformation now this derive is not named so what you do is you just take that code though you would add that is you copy that so you just use the copy up here and we'll go back to my data flow. And remember I said that the tilde greater than uh, is what you, is the syntax used before the name. So what you'll do is let's cancel out of this. And because I only have the code from the snippet, what you do is you actually add the derived first. So we add the derived column. Then we go into scripts. Now it's called derived column one. So we can do control F look for derived column one. There it is. And that name is just fine. And we have the incoming. So all we do is we just replace the derive uh, function name with the snippet that is from the documentation. Okay, now it is using a column called DW hash because it's creating a new column, so that's fine. And it's using these three existing columns in the metadata. All right, that's okay. We don't have those yet uh, in our flow, but you can still add your derived column. All that's going to do is just add those columns in there, and you'll see that it'll show those as invalid. So you can take that as example. You can just change those with the columns that you have in your metadata. So we could say that we're going to do a SHA-1 uh, fingerprint hash using those columns. All right, so that's an intro to the script and then thank you for joining us.